I'm not even sure how you get there. What's up guys? Today I'm out here working on the wagon. This might be one of the last wagon videos that I make because the work I'm doing today isn't involving anything repairing or adding. I'm actually going to be taking off a bunch of parts of it today. I'm going to remove the wheels, camber kit, function forms. I'm going to take off the DC header. Move the bar. I'm gonna leave the MPFI stuff alone. That's just far too difficult to go back to DPFI. Um, I'll probably leave the intake on. I don't think I have a stock arm to fit the PM6 manifold. And then I'm gonna take off the Hasport mounts. And I think that's pretty much it. I don't have a whole lot of uh, upgraded parts on this car. One thing I did put on a while back that I never showed was a hard race camber kit and I've literally driven probably less than 100 miles on it. So that's coming off and that's going to be something that we can go ahead and either sell or transplant. Then I'm going to remove the front lower control arm. I have the hard race bushings pressed in. Also the sway bar end link, I'll take that. And I'm also going to keep the hard race rear lower control arms. And I guess the only thing good out of coming out of that is a lot of these parts are going to get transferred over to the CRX now. So we'll have the new bushings in the front lower arms. I might change the Blackworks arms. Put those hard race on there. And then the camber kit I'll probably put on the front. I'm not sure if I want to go with that one or the Skunk 2. And I don't really like the way the hard race has the bolt on top of the camber kit, not underneath like Skunk 2. Makes it a lot more difficult to adjust when you take it somewhere to get aligned. So that might be the only reason why I go ahead and get the Skunk 2 instead. And I have a Skunk 2 camber kit on the rear already on this car that was an extra set off of the white SI. And then I bought some new tires for CPSs. Went with another set of Neogens. I really like the design of this tire. The price was great for me. The tread wear is perfect. I don't need anything super sticky, but I want something that looked a little more aggressive. And I love the way they look on my my 91 SI hatch. So the, once I get everything swapped over, I can go ahead and clean up. The wheels are a little dirty and dusty. I had been using them on the track car for a while and just the brake dust and everything from those has gotten the wheel a little bit dirty. And then we'll get those put back on because I like the way that these look on the car. So I'm gonna get started, get everything uh, as much as possible taken off today and swapped over. And then we're going to put the car for sale. I'm going to try to sell it uh, as close to stock as possible. I think it'll get the most value for it. With leaving all the stuff on it, it probably won't do much extra. And I think someone would maybe prefer a stock wagon. They can go ahead and modify it how they feel fit. And I think one of the reasons I'm getting rid of it is, uh, I don't know if any of you guys, some of you guys follow me on Instagram. So my wife and I are trying to get into a new house, move out of this house. And so it's just... Uh, about moving forward in life. I know it's a great car. I've had it for almost going to be four, five years this December. But there's always going to be another one. I can always find another one. There's just other priorities I need to take care of at the moment, and this is one of them. I have so many cars. After selling the sedan, and then this one, I sold the Black Dragon about two weeks ago. Um, after I put it back together. It's just nice to not have as many cars and stuff to worry about, and then the whole moving process will be a lot easier as well. So I'll give you guys an update in a little bit once I get a little more work done. And I've gotten pretty far. We're working for the last couple of hours. The wagon passenger side is done. Now I've got the, this is the hard race equipped lower control arm. Now I wasn't sure what I want to use on the CRX. I have the hard race that I'd put on the wagon and I have a set of Skunk 2. And with putting the hard race stuff on the CRX, I kind of want to keep it all hard race. The only thing I dislike about this kit compared to the Skunk 2 is how you have to adjust the ball joints. You have to get to the top of it, loosen these. There's six of them compared to four. And this, these are a lot easier to get to when they're doing the alignment. They can just slide in your hex head, 
or an Allen wrench, whatever the guy may be using, loosen those up, slide it around, tighten it. Where this, he has to make sure the wheels fall a little bit further and get on top and then adjust it. Uh, I, I, I'm no expert in doing alignments, but this just seems like it is going to be a lot easier in compared to doing that. But it's not something I do. I don't do it all the time. I only get the cars aligned when they need it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and keep the hard race on the CRX. And after day one, finished up the suspension. Got the wagon back to stock height with some stock 14 inch steelies on it. And we got the CRX lowered back to the ground, just the front. I didn't have time to do the rear, it's getting a little dark out. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and continue this uh, tomorrow. Start working on those motor mounts and the header and then the rear trailing arms. That shouldn't be as difficult as doing this. This is just kind of time consuming because I had to do all of the suspension, essentially the front lower control arms and then swapping over the entire knuckle assemblies. But it's worth it. I got new parts on the Rex now without having to rebuild it. So that way I can continue working on this car and getting it set up a little bit better. And it's weird seeing the wagon back to stock height, but it actually looks really nice. Drives very, very nice too. So now I'm gonna knock out these motor mounts and get the header removed. After getting the header and the motor mounts removed, another thing I'm working on, I'm converting it to OBD1, which kind of is a backward process, but since this car already did the multi-point swap and I used OBD1 injector clips, it'll be easier to get the injectors on here. I, I had already purchased the harnesses because that was my intention of going OBD1 on this car. I wanted to upgrade it. And now I need the distributor and I need the PM6 ECU because I'm going to be selling that ZC swap to one of my friends. We're going to put this in his CRX along with a set of uh, rear disc brakes that I got off of the old track car. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm going to try to get that started here in a moment. Just got to wire up the O2 sensor and remove the resistor box and plug those together. Alright, we got the OBD1 conversion finished. Had a couple of issues with it when I first started it. First, the exhaust manifold gasket was, it was leaking, so I had a brand new one. I put that on there. No issues at all. I think it had just gotten too flat with a little raised edge, which presses against the exhaust manifold. And the injectors, I went through four different injectors that were not firing. When I first started the car, it was really rough. I had, it was just working on two cylinders, so there's a little trick you can do. Imagine this is a screwdriver. While it's on the car, you touch the injector, and you put your ear up to the end of the screwdriver, and you can hear it tapping. It sounds like this, over and over. So I checked that real quick, and I had cylinders two and four were not firing. So I replaced those two injectors with another two, and then I got this one to work. And then I finally got the last one to work and it was not an issue. So always check that, especially if you're using injectors from a junkyard. But it's running great now. So looks like I'm on the, the last leg of working on it. I'm going to remove the front lip just because I feel like they're difficult to find this particular one off of. It's a Volvo 760. I'll see if I can find the information on that. So that way you guys can search for these, for search for these at the junkyard. Really cool looking lip, really subtle, really clean. So I'm gonna pull that off and then I'm gonna pull off the LED headlight bulbs that are the, the dual filament that I got from Myton Films. And I'm gonna give it a nice cleaning and we'll get it ready for sale. And here's a closer look at that lip. You can see it sits really flush with the bumper. All the way throughout. What I had to do, of course, let me flip the bumper upside down. Okay, I don't want to set it down too hard. Had to trim 
the ends of it and because it was too long and I just used a bunch of nuts and bolts throughout to mount it to the bottom of the bumper and here it is ready to go went ahead and washed it real quick and it came out really nice I haven't washed this car since the end of last year so it had been a little while so it looks a lot better now the bumpers could really use some help same with the moldings and the side skirts Maybe some of the, the trimmer store would really do uh, wonders on it again. Just apologize for the wind noise, a little windy out here today, so I know that's probably gonna, you're gonna hear that on the camera. But I just wanted to get a quick walk around of the car one last time before I go ahead and take some pictures and put it up for sale today. I ended up taking off my Momo with uh, the quick release and the hub put on a sedan wheel. This one has the four spokes as compared to the three spoke or the two spokes. I think most wagons come with the two spoke wheels. I don't remember. I don't remember what happened to my original wheel. I think mine was just torn up so when I uh, removed it and put the aftermarket wheel on I ended up just tossing it. But I was able to find this one in the junkyard. Really good shape too. And everything else in here was stock. I'm going to leave the stereo. I have no use for it. I really haven't really done anything else. Had never even cleaned the seats, couple stains, but cheers, pretty cherry. And then I looked down the driver's side. The only thing that was ever really wrong with this car was that dent there in the fender. See how there's one right there, and then there's one up a little bit further. I think those are both a combination of something. Uh, when it hit it, it bent the entire fender, but it's been like that ever since I've gotten it. Little dings and dents here and there. Someone who has some time can really polish the paint, wax it. The clear coat is all still there. It just needs, just needs some love, basically. And it runs great with the OBD1 swap. No additional power. Just the different electronics with that ECU. Wish I could have found a heat shield. That would, I think, make the engine bay look tons better because it looks pretty ugly with that particular exhaust manifold looked like someone had painted it before and then those little I guess rust spots on it but cleaned it up a little bit in here also so it looks a little bit better for the new owner one thing that really needs to be clean is the hood the bottom side is filthy and even with me just wiping a little portion of it down it started to get a little cleaner so that's something that they could do once uh, whoever gets it hopefully they'll put some time and effort into it and understand uh, what they're getting and how how difficult it is to find these wagons pretty clean and especially with original paint these days. And that about wraps it up on this chapter of the wagon guys. Hope you enjoyed the content. No, it really wasn't much going on for in terms of instructional videos today. But I just wanted to share what I'd been up to recently since I hadn't really done, haven't had much content. I've been so busy trying to get this car back to stock. Um, working on the Black Dragon, which is my old track car as well and getting that one sold. And then the sedan, so. It's been a lot of work, but nothing, uh, nothing. I guess, moving forward. I'm just trying to get rid of a couple vehicles, and, you know, I don't know if I'll really miss the wagon. I, I, I think what I miss more is being able to drive my SI and even spend more time working on my track car because I'm having to spend money working on the wagon, also the sedan, and then insurance, registration. It just all kind of adds up over time, and I don't make a ton of money. I'm just pretty resourceful with what I get, parts I sell, and parts cars as well so I think it'll help me in that uh, in terms of that aspect and then I mentioned earlier how my wife and I are trying to get a new home so that's a lot more important than me trying to hang on to six different EFs right now so I hope you guys enjoyed the content today and glad that the CRX, the CRX got some upgrades I'd like to make a video on that soon and actually finally get it washed before the summer's over and then do a couple more suspension mods to it and this is the last time I will be driving the wagon, guys. I, uh, I had someone come take a look at it on Saturday. Today is Wednesday. He liked it a lot. Just said he needed to get the rest of the money together. So right now I'm driving it to him and I'm gonna scoop up the money. This is the last time I will be enjoying the wagon. Take it easy. Good work. You too.
there it goes. And for those curious, I sold it for $2,400. Pretty much all stock. Nothing uh, except for that OBD1 conversion and the MPFI swap. But I ended up keeping the DC header. I kept this set of Hasport mortar mounts. These look a little different because my friend powder coated them a long time ago and then we shaved off where the Hasport was so it's kind of filled in. Didn't want to get rid of those. Those are great for the single cams. I kept my five zigging wheels with brand new tire on them. They're not necessarily brand new anymore. They have about maybe a thousand, two thousand miles on the tires. Then I sold the function forms for 350. Then I was able to sell the black works that were originally on the CRX for about 120 bucks. So overall, it was uh, definitely worth it. Adding up those totals right there gets me close to, I think, three grand. Was that 24? Was 350? 2750? 2850, 2870 for the parts I sold. So that's not bad, 2870. And I was able to keep a handful of parts that I could easily sell those wheels for a little bit of cash. And uh, the parts that I kept, like the hard race camber kit, the hard race lower control arms for the CRX, and then uh, the end links, the energy suspension end links, and also the radius rod. So not a bad deal. I'm really happy with the results of that and now the CRX is going to get uh, a little bit more mods, stuff that I'd want to do with it and it just made it easier instead of having to buy the parts and tracking them all down again. But that'll be it for today guys. We'll see you next time.